prehistoric herders more sophisticated than scientists realized. Prehistoric herders in the high mountains kept small, diverse animal herds. Find out how a new study reveals that their animal husbandry practices were far more sophisticated than previously thought. I was born on a farm here in Canada. My parents both came from a long line of farmers that stretched back to Victorian Britain and beyond. Our family grew crops and managed a herd of Ayrshire cattle as a dairy operation. We also kept pigs, chickens, rabbits, and sometimes even a few goats. I say we managed a herd because agriculture is an economic enterprise involving complex strategies. That was especially true in our location, which had a relatively short growing season and harsh winters. Agriculture dates back to the Stone Age, specifically the New Stone Age or Neolithic period. Pioneer archaeologists discovered prehistoric agricultural societies in the 19th century. The cultural historical movement focused on studying artifacts and connecting them with cultural traits. From this, scholars recognized that agriculture was the defining feature of the Neolithic period. Later scientists emphasized processes, ways of life, and ecology as ways of explaining Neolithic culture. Today, researchers take a more interdisciplinary approach while applying new molecular and genetic techniques in their work. Dr. Vanessa Navarrete Belda is a postdoctoral researcher in the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona's Archaeozoology Laboratory. She's been studying prehistoric animal husbandry practices using biomolecular analysis for the past six years. Professor Navarrete Belda led a study that the journal Frontiers in Environmental Archaeology published this week. It's the first analysis that identifies how Neolithic high mountain societies managed their livestock. The researchers focused on a large cave called Coro Tresito in the province of Huesca in northeastern Spain. The site is in the Pyrenees Mountains, about 1,500 meters above sea level, and has been concealing a treasure trove for over 7,000 years. Scientists have known about the cave since the 1970s, but they only began extensive excavations there in 2014. Artifacts in the cave indicate that prehistoric farmers used it for an animal stable, and later as living space and a workshop. The conventional wisdom among archaeologists has been that prehistoric farmers used high mountain sites like Coro Tresito in fairly simple, nomadic ways. Scientists assume that these cultures' economies focused heavily on foraging wild resources. Archaeologists knew that Neolithic herders reacted to the seasons by moving flocks of sheep and goats between the high mountains in the summer and the lower valley pastures during the winter months. This process is called transhumance, and scientists assumed it was a fairly crude process in Neolithic times. Professor Navarrete Belda's team assessed the animal ecology, livestock management, and feeding practices the earliest high mountain settlements followed at the site. They examined isotopes of stable carbon and nitrogen in the bone collagen of animal remains. The results of their analysis showed that the prehistoric farmers at the site kept small herds with a range of livestock, including cows, goats, sheep, and pigs. They used the animals to produce both meat and milk. These findings challenged the view that Neolithic farmers relied on relatively crude and basic animal husbandry techniques. The biomolecular analysis indicates that the Cora Tresito farmers' methods were highly sophisticated the herders managed the feeding of each species differently, pasturing each kind of animal in separate fields. They also appear to have provided their herds with leftover agricultural products as fodder, instead of relying on wild resources. The research also shows the animals were well adapted to the cave conditions, 
suggesting the farmers were selectively breeding them. The archaeologists found traces of dairy products, fat, and storage containers. All these discoveries show that high mountain Neolithic farmers were much more sophisticated than scientists had believed. Their activities went far beyond reacting to the seasons by wandering nomadically and hoping for the best. These discoveries are important for humanity for a couple of reasons. First of all, they remind us yet again not to underestimate the ingenuity of indigenous cultures. The intelligence of the farmers at Coro Tresito was at least on par with our own. They used impressive ingenuity to adapt to their surroundings and even to influence them over time. Our new understanding of Neolithic high mountain settlers and their way of life is part of the new story we all need about the world around us and our place within it. The techniques the scientists have unearthed demonstrate that these herders were aware of the interrelatedness of humanity and the plant and animal kingdoms. The Coro Tresito herders display deep ecological awareness. Their sophisticated agricultural practices, such as adapting their herds to the cave conditions, show their awareness of long-term human and animal well-being. The cave's artifacts and traces indicate that this society thrived for more than a thousand summers and winters. These communities not only adapted to their surroundings, they came up with strategies to become even more resilient and sustainable. The study concludes by saying, the presence of transformation activities related to dairy and fat products and the existence of storage structures within the cave indicates the complexity of Neolithic processes in the central Pyrenees and how these areas were quickly integrated into a broader economic system. We always have more to learn if we dare to know.